Welcome to New Filmmakers Los Angeles in partnership with Movie Maker Magazine. I'm Carolyn McDonald and I'm here with Jeanette Delaney to talk about her film, Whore. Let's take a look at a clip. Hey, uh, What's that noise? Uh, nothing. Uh, just one moment while I put on something more suitable for the occasion. Can you hear me? Could we not light fires near cardboard and linen? And it's Sunday afternoon. Why aren't you headed to mass? Perdí la noción del tiempo rezando a Dios porque mi hija se ha convertido en prostituta, una prostituta de voz. I appreciate the prayers, but could you take this elsewhere? Hey, Jeanette, how are you? Good, how are you? Good, welcome. Nice to have you here. Thank nice you to have you me. here. Yeah, so tell us, what was the inspiration for Whore? Uh, there were a few inspirations. One was very practical. Mm. I wanted to make a film in one location. Mm. Um, I come from a theater background, and it was also, you know, COVID times. Mm, okay. And I'm also inspired by films that take place in one, sometimes one location, or mm -hmm. only a few, like mm -hmm. Ex Machina. Mm -hmm. So I, it was a, it was a challenge for me that um, that I was just excited to embark on. Um, and then the other inspiration was wanting to explore codependent relationships, mm. but really, you know, honor the difficulty of navigating through them, especially mm -hmm. when you have one person who might not survive without you or might not be okay mm -hmm. without you, especially mm -hmm. when you're dealing with um, family and mental illness. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. Was it inspired by any personal events or anyone you knew? Um, in your life or, or situations you'd heard about? Yeah, so it's, it's pretty fictional, the story. Mm -hmm. I'm not a phone sex operator. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I, I never dealt with exactly that situation, but mm -hmm. I have dealt with, um, you know, the essence of the film, which is mm -hmm. having a codependent relationship with someone mm -hmm. who's struggling with mental illness. So mm -hmm. the heart of it is real, and it was mm -hmm. something I was dealing with at that time. Mm -hmm. um, all the details are made up. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really wonderful how you showed the dynamic and care through these two characters, you know, the way they both expressed their feelings. Can you talk about the development process of the script and how you layered that in there and talked to your actors about that? Yeah, I wanted to have the characters just live in two completely different worlds. Mm -hmm. And I figured, how do you do that in, a, in one location, in a living room mm -hmm. or a bedroom? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I figured, well, what can two people do in their living space that mm -hmm. <laughs> is uh, you know, indicative of their belief system but also is mm -hmm. compelling mm -hmm. um so i figured the daughter could be a phone sex operator so that's a you know a work from home job <laughs> and, <laughs> and the mother is a hoarder uh who's in denial mm -hmm. and you know that's the one location really um helped bring the characters to life. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And added a layer of, say, tension, or just like you just said a minute ago, of coming from two different backgrounds and being able to navigate in this space. I mean, what was it like working with them as actors in this space? Yeah, so um, shout out to uh, Brianda Agramonte. Mm -hmm. She is uh, Christian, she's a believer, and she plays a daughter who, mm -hmm. in the film, is an atheist. Mm. Um, and, you know, Ileana, who's a very put together, uh, very successful kind of woman in real life, plays the mother who's really struggling with this um, illness. So they were playing characters outside of them, and they uh, did it really well because I. A, they're good actors, but B, I just really wanted neither of them to play an idea. Like, I just always reminded them of that, and they did a great job with it. I didn't want the person playing the phone sex operator to somehow make that her whole character. Mm -hmm. Sure. <laughs> you know, it's just sure. something that she does and that mm -hmm. she enjoys. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, I didn't want um, the mother to be solely identified by mental illness. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. it's just something that 
is a struggle and we all have struggles. So mm -hmm, just being human, I think, you know, mm -hmm. was really how they both approached it. Right, right. Did you, as far as the elder actress, did you direct her as to knowing she had issues or just tell her, talking to her about who she was? You know, you know what I mean? It's Yeah, I, I let the, the actors do their thing, mm -hmm. um, but I did, you know, a lot of times when you're dealing with someone who's in denial, there's a duality, mm -hmm. which is they know something's wrong, but also like something might not be wrong. Mm -hmm. And I wanted her character to stand up for herself. Mm -hmm. And there are valid points that her character makes, which is this is how I like my living space. I'm an adult and I, you know, I can make my own decisions. Mm -hmm. um, and there's something very valid about that. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I really wanted the, the mother character to just have a really good argument as to why she should be left to be herself mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and have a certain dignity about it, but also know that something, you know, isn't perhaps normal about mm -hmm. how she's living her life. Exactly, exactly. I understand. And without giving a spoiler alert for those who haven't seen the film in terms of the resolution um, at the end and the character, the younger woman, um, her response to that, how did you come to that conclusion in terms of developing the story to make that choice to get your theme across? Yeah, so I really wanted to honor the difficulty of navigating these relationships, especially within family. Mm -hmm. um, and so, I also don't want to spoil it. But <laughs> I know, it's hard to answer the question <laughs> so, a little bit, but um, it's just the dynamic of the relationships yeah. and, you know, exploring the theme through this dynamic, which is beautiful. Yeah, there isn't a, I, I didn't want the audience to, to come out of the movie thinking that I've given them a solution. Mm -hmm. Um, because it's always case by case basis, right. and that's what I base the ending mm -hmm. on. That it's just difficult, and I wanted to provide visibility mm -hmm. about that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly, and it shows. I can I can tell. Again, we won't spoil it for those who haven't seen. Give people something to look forward to. And so, tell us about the production and development of the story. What was the process like between scripting, you know, writing the script, and then going into production? What kind of time frame was that? It was a very short time frame for oh, wow. me. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, so I made this film thanks to the Lilith Inclusion Fellowship, mm. and. Uh, I worked at like three, four, five times the pace that I'm used to, mm. uh, which was scary. You know, I found out that I got the fellowship in December. At that point, I only had uh, a treatment, you know, mm. my idea. And then by the end of the December, I had the final draft. So it was like a few weeks. Mm -hmm. And then from there, about maybe seven weeks later, we were in full production. Mm -hmm. And as the sole producer, <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, um, it was a really you know fast paced. Um, first, I was really scared, but I also realized that not having enough time also means that I didn't have enough time to overthink anything. Mm -hmm. I just went straight for what I wanted, mm -hmm. um, and I knew I would have to approach everything confidently. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, I really liked seeing that that side of me and. Um, just really rising to the occasion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as writer, producer, director. Um, so talk about that a little bit more. What was your crew? I mean, yeah, as you said, a lot of the onus of it was on you, but once you did get into production, talk about your team and uh, the production process, how many days, things like that. Uh, this film took four days, mm -hmm. which I think is quite luxurious, <laughs> you know, to shoot four pages a day. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a director who, you know, I, I need a lot of takes sometimes. <laughs> um, I don't go on until um, I'm happy within reason. Um, so I wanted to give, you know, the actors time. I didn't want to feel rushed when we were in production. It was mm -hmm. just getting to production was rushed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, yeah, the, one of the first people I found uh, was uh, Dustin Ward, who's the, um, the DP on mm -hmm. this, director of photography. Mm -hmm. and. He was just really passionate about passionate in general about mm -hmm. cinematography, but also telling this story, this mm -hmm. narrative. Mm -hmm. um, and so we 
collaborated a lot and really saw eye to eye quite quite quickly mm -hmm. right. what we wanted the film to look and feel like. So yes, uh, the um, post-production process with music and uh, what was that like? What was your team like there? The post-production process is always oddly sometimes the most fun for me. Mm -hmm. Um, just because the I, it's it's done, we have the shots, <laughs> we can move on. So I worked with um, sound mixer and designer uh, Christopher Wall, who's mm -hmm. just a pleasure to work with um, and has like, worked with me on all my shorts. Um, I really wanted sound wise to not be overbearing. Mm -hmm. um, you know, maybe that is because I come from a theater background, mm -hmm. so I I didn't need that much much music mm -hmm. in the film. Um, I had bits of jazz play here and there because mm -hmm. I think it just captured the essence of the film which was you know dealing with a very complicated topic. Mm -hmm. um, also jazz can be fun mm -hmm. and I wanted to add a little bit of joy here and there mm -hmm. um, and that's mostly what we did and in terms of color I really, you know, I was ins inspired by the TV series Barry, which is a comedy, but it's dark. Mm -hmm. um, and so we had these like, rich colors mm -hmm. um, and Alice, the, the colorist, did a really great job in just making something that Dustin shot look even better, which was mm -hmm. hard to do because <laughs> it already looks great. Nice, nice. Yeah, it looks really great and it is really noticeably dark, but there are colors that pop out in places. I did notice that as I was yeah. watching it. I noticed that really nice job of that. So is mental health a theme that resonates throughout all of your films? Is that in your intention as a filmmaker? The theme that resonates in all of my films is the journey to success hmm. and the obstacles in the way. So, you know, in my previous shorts, there's different reasons, different obstacles. Mm -hmm. And this one was, her main obstacle was her dependency on her, emotional dependency on her mother and not wanting to, wanting to leave the nest, but also not wanting to leave her mother behind mm -hmm. and that fear mm -hmm. uh, what will happen to her mother. So, yeah, really it's about, it's really about this, phone sex operator who has dreams of becoming a sex therapist and gets into Oxford University, mm -hmm. which you would think was a no-brainer. She should just get on that flight and go, but there's something that she has to leave behind. Mm -hmm. So I wanted mm -hmm. uh, there to be an emotional blocker to her success. Mm. Interesting. Very, very interesting. And so that's to a kind of external success. And would do you also look at sort of an internal success too along those lines? You know, since you're doing a lot of or a lot of different films about success, so different layers of success, do you define it in different ways? Yeah, I, in all my films, the the character is looking for that external success. Mm -hmm. Okay. But I think most of us know that there's so much internal work that you have mm -hmm. to do to get the external. So mm -hmm. that that part aspect always interests me. Mhm. Mm Great. That sounds very cool. Very cool. Great. Well, tell us uh, where um what else can we look for from you and where can we find you? I uh, guess yeah, so Find me on Insta, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, at Jeanette underscore Delaunay. Um, but also, yeah, I'm writing a lot. I uh, want to get into TV, so I've written a lot of pilots. And, you know, it's not specifically about anything that was in horror, but it, that really um, demonstra horror de demonstrates my style, mm -hmm. my writing style. Mm -hmm. So I really like you know, to write a darker comedy or a dramedy. Mm -hmm. um, and usually someone is approaching success. Mm -hmm. It's sort of the same themes. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I, I hope that um, there's uh, more to see. I'm also uh, writing a feature. So right now I'm just in the writing phase mm -hmm. of a lot of uh, the work that um, I plan to do. Okay, great. Well, thank you so much for being here with us today. It's been a joy to talk with you. and. Uh, I wish you the best of luck and uh, hope everyone gets out to see whore. Thank you.